Hey, Teres. Hi. Uh, welcome to today's episode. How are you doing? Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm doing fine. I'm excited for 2024. So I'm excited to have this uh, call with you. Same here. Same here. So Teres, although we've interacted and we've known each other for some time now, but uh, if you take some time to introduce yourselves to the to our audience today. Sure. Uh, I'm Terry. Uh, most people call me this way. Uh, and for the past three years, I've been part of Hop Online. Uh, we are a performance marketing agency for B2B SaaS companies. Um, basically, we help companies scale their businesses through Google Ads, SEO, and other marketing efforts. Um, I started out as a customer success manager uh, for one of our agency clients a couple of years ago. Um, and then I transitioned to a team lead, and I'm now taking uh, the role of chief marketing officer here at Hop. Um, this is my recent uh, <laughs> promotion. So uh, I basically switched from customer success to uh, marketing. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my background. And before Hope Online, I was doing a lot of customer success roles in different creative and performance agencies. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to chat about customer success with you. That's uh, that's amazing. Thank you for making time for today's episode. And uh, your, your background, which is as heavy on customer success, but also brings together a lot of marketing, will I think make our today's episode a lot more exciting. I'm very excited for this one. I am as well. <laughs> All right. So uh, my first question to you is, um, what role do customer success matrices play in overall uh, business strategy and decision making? Obviously, I'm a bit biased here because I was working with customer success before, uh, but I would say it has a vital uh, impact on general business strategy and decision making. Um, when I think about customer success, um, I kind of categorize the different metrics within three main categories. I think that helps to then identify what are the um, kind of the business impact that uh, each of these metrics have on uh, overall performance. Uh, obviously, the first are the more uh, customer perception metrics. These are things like you know, PS scores or um, customer satisfaction. And these are really helpful, I think, to get a pulse on what your customers are interested in, uh, what their needs are. How do they feel about working with you, et cetera? And that has a really important impact on the general business strategy and decision making because it can give you good signals on whether things are going the right direction, whether you need to change your product or service or things like that. Um, so this kind of metrics really have a direct impact because they can literally, customers can literally tell you, okay, this is what we like and this is what you need to improve. Um, and that really helps to to drive uh, different business decisions um, and make better strategic uh, decisions overall. Um, then I would say there are other metrics that are more falling into the category of operational excellency. Uh, these are things like uh, time to resolution or how much time it takes to, to actually provide value to the customers. Mm -hmm. And this kind of metrics, I think, are really useful uh, in the cases where you want to see um, how you can improve the processes uh, within a business. Um, for example, in our case, as I work in a digital agency um, and we have onboarding processes, we identified, for example, that in the, in the beginning, um, when we onboard a client, if we don't really present enough information ahead of time and let them know about the expectation that, let's say, strategy takes time, um, Afterwards, uh, there is less customer satisfaction. And by improving these processes and by looking at that metric specifically, uh, really helped us to actually have this better business outcomes and clients stick around for longer, they were happier, etc. cetera. So um, second category, I would say, is uh, the operational excellency kind of metrics related to customer support. And then obviously the final one, which is the one I would say that has the most impact on business uh, is the business impact metrics. And these are things like churn, retention rate, mm -hmm. um, lifetime value, everything that really tracks customers over time and how they really feel, but they really feel about whatever service or product you're offering to them. Um, and these have a direct impact because they are telling you uh, for example, which customers stick around the longest, which ones are most likely to be upsold or, um, you know, whether they're happy with your services, is there something that you need to improve? And depending on the, the different segments and customers you have, there might be differences within 
these metrics and each segment. And uh, so tracking these also really have um, a vital impact on, on the business. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think uh, you mentioned uh, all the ones that generally are tracked in, in the world of CS, which is NPS, CSAT. Uh, it's it's interesting that you bring out operational excellence as well, because in most of the discussions that I have had, the focus is generally on, you know, the business matrices that you talked about, which is LTV and RR or retention. And we often let go of operational matrices, tracking time to resolution and our KPIs related to that. So that's an interesting one. So in continuation with this, because you've stated a few of them, uh, can you share an example where uh, customer success matrices that you have been tracking have had a tangible business impact or increased customer satisfaction? Yeah, well, since you mentioned that uh, you don't often cover the operational excellence you want, I guess I can give you an example with, with that specific one. Um, around two years ago, when I was leading the customer success uh, team, one of our key metrics for um, a quarter was to actually improve uh, the churn rate. And something that we discovered is that there was a discrepancy between um, what we were communicating with our marketing efforts and then what we were communicating during onboarding, uh, which then led to clients having higher expectations for how quickly they can get uh, results. And so by tracking this time to value uh, metric, um, we actually identified that by communicating it earlier in uh, in the communication with clients, uh, we actually managed to increase in, improve the retention rate for our clients because they, from the start, they knew how long it would take to, uh, let's say, develop a content strategy or how long it would take to audit their website and everything else like that. Because uh, usually in marketing, everything needs to happen right away or, you know, even like last week, uh, if possible. So, um, yeah, having a bit more open communication by being able to actually report on clients how much is our average time to value really right. helps us to actually improve that relationship and uh, keep more clients uh, for the longer term. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good one because usually this cross-functional communication, it's it's not that well measured at how, what kind of impact it have had on the customer journey itself. So that's a good point. So in continuation with this one, so... How should a team leverage customer feedback? Like in, in the example that you just stated that the time to value was communicated differently. It was different when the onboarding was going on and in the marketing efforts, it was slightly different. So how should a team leverage customer feedback and data to iterate and improve on CS initiatives? I would honestly say that the first step is to actually gather both qualitative and quantitative data, uh, because when we were looking at time to value, uh, in our case, this is like qualitative data, uh, we didn't know that our time to value is actually an issue. We only identified that after uh, talking to customers directly and having annual NPS scores and, and so on. Uh, and actually, that was one of the kind of the, the constructive feedback that we got from clients that they would have like to to know that in advance so they can better plan uh, their marketing efforts, et cetera. So I think having a combination of data points at the beginning really helps. And then once, you, once you've collected that data and you know what the issues are, it's um, also a matter of planning well how to take this feedback into account. Because mm -hmm. obviously during this kind of qualitative and quantitative um, studies, there's a lot of data that's collected and there is some feedback that's relevant and then there's others that it's not or it's not applicable to the business or it doesn't make sense from a business perspective. So once you've collected kind of uh, this feedback loop, it's important to identify which of uh, uh, these, let's say, talking points that were mentioned are worth pursuing, which would have, uh, which which of these would have the highest business impact uh, on, on the specific team, et cetera. So I would say, um, yeah, for leveraging customer feedback and data and iterating, it's a matter of first having the tools to do that and then the desire to bring different uh, data sources and then collaboration from the different teams to actually achieve um, better outputs based on that data that's collected. Right, right. Uh, now, because you're working uh, in the capacity of a CMO, so you have a very good outlook both on the marketing efforts as well as um, given the amount of time you have spent as a CS and a team leader in CS. 
So in what ways do you think uh, marketing efforts contribute to customer success matrices? Yeah, I would say the two are very well connected. And actually, that was the reason why transitioning from uh, customer success to marketing wasn't that difficult for me, because I had already collaborated a lot uh, with the marketing team previously. Um, from a marketing perspective, I think it's uh, customer success is it's a very important team because it's it's kind of a... Um, what is how how do you say that when it's uh, like a collection of knowledge uh, just sitting there and you can just pick and uh, cherry pick uh, some insights into what are the customers' problems, what do they want, what should you communicate, uh, etc. But also, as previously mentioned, I think it's important for marketing to communicate the right things and set the right expectations for the customer success team to actually uh, be able to operate efficiently and also achieve success. Because if um, the marketing team doesn't set the right expectations and customers come in um, expecting something entirely different, even if customer success is following their own um, SOPs, if they if these SOPs don't match the expectations of the clients, uh, the end result would be negative for everyone involved in the process. Uh, so for me, yeah, marketing is definitely uh, the cornerstone of setting expectations for customer success. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, while you do that, you know, focusing on these matrices and the marketing effort in the right direction to set the right expectations, what challenges or obstacles have you encountered when actually measuring the impact of these initiatives in customer success? And if you have had any strategy to overcome them? Yeah, I think the main challenge is actually collecting that information, um, at least from my personal experience. Um, obviously, qualitative data, like, uh, let's say, churn, retention rate, all of these require tools and they require uh, proper tracking internally, which is not necessarily the case, especially in smaller companies. And we've encountered that not only within our own agency, but also with clients that we've worked with. Uh, there are so many uh, things that you can track that at some point it gets overwhelming to figure out which are the main KPIs uh, that would drive the uh, the that would move the needle and drive the, the biggest results. Mm -hmm. And then even once you have that, uh, also from a quantitative um, research and like asking actually quite questions to clients, a lot of them are somewhat reluctant to share real feedback. Uh, I mean, people obviously don't want to share negative feedback. And so they always focus more on the positive or they would only share negative mm -hmm. uh, feedback if they're really, really unhappy and are ready to leave. Uh, so it's kind of difficult to uh, filter out actually the constructive feedback uh, from customers, uh, which then makes it more difficult to figure out what you should communicate from a marketing perspective. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you experienced that as well? <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, because when we are talking to our customers and we think that everything's going well and it's headed in the right direction and looks like an account that will grow with uh, you know, as time passes and you incorporate their feedback, but then comes the time of renewal and they decline and there's no renewal happening. And that comes out as a surprise that all the matrices were in the right direction. Probably we did not, uh, you know, ask a one-on-one -on -one that uh, what's bothering you. I mean, the numbers look great, but uh, it, it actually didn't convert like that. So yes, we have had that first-hand experience very much so. And I think it's uh, it's easy to fall into that trap. Uh, and that's why it's important to have both uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, research. I think these days, a lot of companies over rely on quantitative uh, information like tracking churn and retention rate and LTV and all of these metrics. And they're so focused on the numbers, but they forget the human aspect of customer success and, you know, just building a connection with your customers, asking them, okay, what is... Uh, troubling you this week? Uh, what are you working on? What are your main challenges? How can we help? This human connection, I think it's, um, it's something that we often forget to do these days because we're so data driven. Uh, but actually, it's usually the key to success and actually having a better strategic decision long term. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That, that's the soul of our jobs as CSMs. Uh, that's what our leaders rely on us to do, you know, just there are all these tools and technologies for you, but uh, you're still the center of making sure that customer gets what they signed up for and hopefully more from the product. Yeah. yeah. As I see it, tools only allow you to kind of gather ideas on what to ask uh, mm -hmm. and give you a direction. Uh, 
let's say you're looking at uh, your, a report which shows you churn rate, retention rate, LTV, it can give you um, some indication of what might be um, the reason why com like companies are leaving, let's say, within a certain process or if we've sold them a certain service and then they drop out in three months, maybe there is an issue with the service. But that's only a suggestion. And then you need to go and follow up with the clients, ask them, is it the case? Is there anything else that you would like to see us uh, doing, et cetera? So definitely. I agree. Uh, the last question that I have, uh, Teres, for you is that looking ahead, uh, we already have much of the automation in place. And with AI now taking the center stage, uh, what emerging trends or technology do you see influencing the measurement and the demonstration of customer success in future. Yeah, well, AI is definitely driving the game right now and everyone is talking about it and it's definitely revolutionizing customer success. I don't think anyone has a clear answer on how customer success would look like in one or two years. I think right now this is one of the roles that probably is uh, the most impacted one from AI. Um, I think I read a survey by Pilot a few days ago, which was saying that 50% of the recent layoffs are actually customer success because uh, because of AI. Um, and I think there is a common misunderstanding that uh, AI will replace customer success. And to some extent, it might be the case in some areas. Um, and obviously, a lot of things can be automated. But for me, that would only mean uh, the customer success role will change in a way that would turn it back more to its uh, foundations yes. as what we were discussing, going back to actually understanding your customers, having a more human approach, focusing on where things really matter uh, and asking the right questions. And so I think AI in general, all these new tools coming out that allow us to um, have collect more information would only give us better tools to actually uh, do our customer success job better. Um, an example I can give you from uh, from our own experience in the company, uh, we recently developed um, a software. This is a bit difficult to explain technical, but uh, for one of our clients, we were um, wondering how we can improve the um, revenue that they are getting on a, on a monthly um, basis. And we use AI to actually identify uh, their most profitable cohorts because they have a lot of um, customers and they have huge ad spends, uh, two million above, above two million uh, a month. Um, we use the AI to actually collect uh, and um, we use machine learning to actually collect and sort this information. Uh, and then we identify the cohorts that are actually driving the, the best results. And then we use that, um, these results to actually talk to these customers and figure out what are their pain points specifically, what do they need? And then we went in and um, optimized the creatives and we optimized our uh, tone of voice, etc., to actually adapt to this specific cohort, which was driving the highest revenue. So in a way, um, yes, we used AI to automate part of that and customer success might have uh, done it a different way. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the end result is the same. Customers are happier and uh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the end, I mean. You do it with technology, uh, all of it with technology. You do you bring out human aspects in, and merge it with technology, but uh, uh, customers remain the focus. So yeah, I agree with that one. So uh, with this, we come to the end of today's episode, Terry. Thank you so much for your time today. This has been insightful because it definitely borrows your experience from marketing and merges it with what we are trying to do in customer success. Thank you once again. Thank you, Shivani. Have a great day.